So what 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 uh, what's next in the schedule? So I, I I will show you a few exercises, a few projects, a few collaborations, different questions that I uh, I did with a principal understanding of our philosophy that we are introducing to you. Everything is, is like this. But then now, how, how, I, how I deal with this. So I will talk about <clears throat> kind of, a, a, right, I will call fluid boundaries. So more or less, what, is, what, it, what, what are the, the things and, and the, the, the relations that I do within my specific research and interest? And uh, a few instruments, because as you will see, a very important part of, of my work is to, to deal with AI, with, with big data and so on, through instruments, through building instruments that are personal, that, are that can address specific questions that I am asking, sp specific interests interest that I have. So I build instruments, and then we, you will be working, we'll all be working with, with one of them. And a few projects, things that I do with these instruments. So it's, it's uh, something that I prepare, that I share, but I also use them myself. <clears throat> so <clears throat> uh, five things. So first, regarding the, the, the boundaries of my research interest, so I, I want to, to, to address at the level of, of my PhD dissertation, because everything that I did afterwards kind of fortunately is following the same line. So my PhD dissertation, it was called Indexical Architecture, Prominent Positions, Applications, and the Web. And the framework is the exact same framework that we've been talking about for the last three hours. So a lot of data, a lot of computers, everything is talking. What is architecture then about? And then in this, <clears throat> so what is a kind of a, a, the motivation of this kind of proto-treatise that uh, this may look like, or now in retrospective, it's kind of a proto-treatise. Proto <clears throat> it's very much motivated, for example, it, for, for, by this uh, hypothesis. So you have these treatises on architecture, and you can think about uh, uh, the first 10 books on architecture as a reaction to the Roman Empire covering the whole world, and needing to build cities, to put Rome everywhere. And you can look at the, uh, at, at, uh, uh, the 10 books on architecture on, on this sense. So I need, I, I, the, in, in, the Roman Empire is everywhere, but the land is not the same, but our buildings need to be the same. Our cities need to be the same. How can we do this? Five, you have 10 books how to treat landscape, how to treat buildings, how to treat the city, how to make uh, 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 urbanism, what kind of techniques and instruments were important at the time. Path, this is it, you take the books, you go around the world, you read the books, and then you build Rome everywhere. Or you jump a few 500 years in time, and then the printing press is, is there. Same, same story, the printing press is there, the radius of action of the architect also kind of expanded. Everything can be now the, the, the characters substitute the images. Then the same story. How can we build something with characters, with perspective, with certain techniques? Because before this notion, of course, the, the architect needed to be at spot was making sketches and really almost take the stones and tell to the master of the stones, it should be more or less like this. And if the architect was not there, then the things could not work. Again, printing press, then you have another kind of treatise where you can make a, you can draw a building and the building can be drawn anywhere without the architect needing to be there. This is another kind of treatise. Then you make another, another jump, you go to Colhas. This is uh, uh, an, another kind of, of, of fully connected world again, but in a different scale. You say the, ho the whole world is urbanized. Every decision can be made with one phone call. 
uh, Japanese architect building in, 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 in New York, no problem. All the materials are there. You take all the materials, you take all the decisions, you take all the drawings. Another kind of covering the world, another kind of radius of action. Then this can be, uh, we, we think of it a little bit like, like, a, like a treatise as well. How to trick architecture in a world that is that where the, physic, where the physical infrastructure is the same. Highways everywhere, water is everywhere, electricity is everywhere. And then now our motivation is very similar. So the whole, the, the, again, the whole world is fully connected in a different way. All the, all the references are there, all the projects are in one uh, a click on the mouse, all the floor plans, all the books on architecture, all the references that before were kind of scars. So now if everything is there, then how to deal with this? And this is what this was about. So then first I said, okay, it's a fully connected world. There's a global network of computers. What do architects <clears throat> of today have to say about this? And then uh, reading and metaphorically talking with, with contemporary architects, just asking them, what is the global network for you? What do you think about the abundance of information on the global network? And how would you operate this? So look, look with uh, uh, talking to, to uh, to Kolhas, to Schumacher, to, to, to uh, uh, even a little bit uh, in a few decades, decades, uh, uh, decades before. So what, what do they have to say about this? Talking about blobs, talking about uh, ling linguistics in architecture, these stru structuralist architects who were finding stabilities in, 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 in linguistics in this dialectic uh, turn and kind of my conclusion at the time were like okay in architecture we really don't know how to deal with this yet so it's not really a thing you know so then I said okay who knows web search engines no content shared platforms no online translations no and then just look at how they did it how they do it why why is it like this and create kind of an abstract understanding of how kind of they do it and then put it again in relation to, to architecture, to architecture and to online applications. So I developed three online applications at the time we're heavily working with Tumblr, for example, with data streams, collecting 80,000 posts per day, just mimicking directly what Google is doing, mimicking directly what Facebook is doing, and just trying to, 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 to say, well, how can I deal with all these images? How can I, how can I model them? How can I encode them? What kind of algorithms these people are doing? How can I create these categories? How can I just be able to grasp more than I could with, with a simple pen and paper and computers and so on? So I developed uh, a few online applica a few applications. And, uh, and, the first, and the first project kind of started when this finished. So I, it, I, there was an interesting turn I would say, in my interest, I would call it uh, panoramas of cinema. I would call it a local double turn, in the sense that instead of of me looking, start looking at, instead of me start looking at data streams and generic information, Twitter data streams and Wikimedia Commons. So what if it's not about looking at the generic and try to find information on it or trying to find the rare in it through algorithms. So what if I start collecting things that I like? So what if it's about me? What if it's about my databases that are not generic or me or my community? So this project has been going on since uh, 2019 and it's called Panoramas of Cinema. And it is an open search engine that is tailored to a personal collection of movies. So again, this is the same uh, technique, techniques, but really in a way privatized or kind of going towards intimacy. So as of now, uh, there are more than 1300 movies from which more than 2 million images are extracted and more than 5 million dialogue lines are also uh, identified. 
So it started like, with 200 movies that I kind of liked, and then it starts growing with no apparent reason. So decades, directors, genre, crossing over, crossing over all these classes, cr crossing over what is a drama, what, what are movies about drama, and, and 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 comedies and so on. Just like, just like no apparent reason. Huh? One movie takes you to the other one. One person is telling you you should watch this, and then it's just coming and coming. So it's always in constant, in constant uh, uh, development. So if I, if I am to, to, to tell you more or less how it, it, it works, how it, it comes to be, to being. So the first step is the discretization of things because it's a timeline. Huh? So it's a sequence of images, it's a sequence of dialogues, it's a sequence of things. So the first step is how you can start identifying beginnings and endings. So algorithms for 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 recognizing camera shots you know, when a camera starts jumping around. So then you you identify a jump, you save an image, or when 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 someone is talking, you identify when someone is talking, you take an image, or every 10, 20 seconds, you take an image. And then from these two hours long, then you get as a, a few thousand of, of images that are kind of relevant that are showing you what the movie may be about. And with the dialogues, it's pretty straightforward because there are these files, SRT files, and then you know you know what's been said and in and, and what time. So you have all these movies, you cut them, and then instantly you have millions of things. So then what to do with these millions of things? And this is what the, the, the mm -hmm. techniques and the algorithms that we've been discussing in the under layer uh, today come into play. This is AI, this is machine learning, and directly what, what Google is doing now. So I have all these images and I start with image recognition. I start just recognizing places. So I present all the images and I said, what, what do you see here? And then you get labels like this is a hospital room, there's a chair there, there there's arc, there's a fountain, this is this, this is that. So each image is then start to be qualified, start to be characterized by the objects that the machine is identifying in it. You, with the same image, you say, okay, what kind of objects do you see there? In this case, you see helicopters and airplanes and so on. Huh? So what do you see here? What do you see here? Is this like this? Is this like that? And again, one image starts to get qualified in different ways. So now it's a place, but there's also an object. The same thing with faces. So these faces is, is, is important, it's interesting because if you are searching for architecture, usually uh, portraits are not very relevant. So portraits are talking about something else. So identified faces, if it's a portrait, if it's people there or not, and, and so on. And again, the same image, gets another kind of, 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 uh, of profile. You do the same with colors. What kind of colors are there? And with certain structures, the structures that have nothing to do with, with, uh, uh, with recognition of objects, just what, what are the basic lines of one image? So you do this with everything, with more than 2 million images. And then, uh, so this is one ground. Then, and then you do something similar with the text. You start looking at the, at the, the dialogues, start looking at works, create model, custom-made models. You can make backup works. You can make uh, term frequency. You can make semantic generalizations, topic modeling, just by looking at the words and how they are next to each other. So contextualizing the words and creating these kind of maps that can these kind of maps are very helpful. Uh, these kind of models, they help you to answer specific questions. For example, this map, there's all the movies there. And just by counting the words, then you can you get more or less what they are talking about. Therefore, you see which image, which movie is talking about the same thing as the other one. For example, here we are we are with the with the why my, my pointer is not there. Let me try to fix this. Uh, uh, 
Maybe you see it. Not there. Show pointer. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and here and here we are with the kings, we are with the sires, we are with the lords, kings, we are with Henry, with Eleanor, and so on. Huh? So you get that Lancelot, you get these images. What with these movies? What are they talking? You, you can you can directly uh, uh, make links and make a story that these movies are from pre-modern times where they were actually kings and the king was a thing in the movie. Yeah? For just, for example, a very simple story. Just how to deal with all these dialogues and what kind of questions can you ask? So this is, very, this is one, one important thing that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in with these panoramas of cinema, with this application, something that, that I like to, when I'm working on it, something that I want to to I want it to be an instrument more than a tool. There's a very thin line between what an instrument is and what a, a tool is. I mean you can make an instrument with a tool, but I'm not sure that you can make a tool with an instrument. Societies value differently the objects that come out from a tool than the of then the objects or events that come out from an instrument. So I think this is a very thin line that I want to keep drawing. One of the things that I find interesting with the tool in relation to the instrument is that with the instrument, you can work in scales, for example. It's the same thing. What different scales? The piano, the scales of the piano, and so on. Huh? So it's not like you're changing the, the, the tip of a, of a drill you're doing the same, but with different uh, nodes in the scale, for example. So in this sense, I think about the, the panoramas as an instrument, because you can work on different scales. You can ask questions in different scales. And this is where the idea of the creation of the char of characters uh, take, take a role here. So the videotech, this collection of movies, creates certain characters, creates collections of, of images or collection of text that within themselves have a certain value or have a certain face, just like a character. So for example, here, one of the characters that you can ask to with, the, with, the, with panoramas, I call it Italica. All the, all the movies from, from, from Italy, 60s, 70s, 80s. You have Pasolini, Fellini, Antonioni in France, 1900, eight and a half, La Notte, La Strada, Amacor, the, the, the Cameron, and so on. So you can ask specifically to these movies. Here we see, for example, a map, 24,000 frames only from these movies, mapped out according to these characterizations of colors and, and contours and so on. And you can say, okay, Italica, what do you have to say about, about uh, fountains? And, they, and if you ask the same question to another character, the answer will be different huh? than if you ask the same question to the whole thing or to a specific character. Because for each character, for each collection of movies, since they are consistent in themselves and they have a face in themselves, they are telling a story as a, as a character, then they will tell you different things. And we take a small sample, for example, if we take a small sample, 15 frames from the same cluster, then we see in terms of colors and structures that things start again to get similar in their own terms. So you can navigate, for example, or ask questions. Another interesting thing about, about uh, uh, kind of, of, of this fluent uh, line between instrument and tool, is that you can create images by yourself. So the creation of new Im images that uh, I call panoramas, panoramic views of, of uh, panoramic views of images. And not only that, but 
the idea that you as a user can start defining things in your own terms. It's not that only the machine can tell you what it sees, but you can also say, you can also start saying this image is about this. So for example, here, the user Pygmalion has worked with 900 images and these 900 images, they have been categorized like accessories, ballroom, bath, gymnasium, guest bedroom, which in a way we can, we, we have, if we see these kind of labels, we can have an idea of what they, this may be about. But this user has also worked with images that are showing void. Like how do you show a void? So this panorama that you see here is a panorama of the tag suspension from the perspective of the Pygmalion. So for Pygmalion, this is suspension. This is how suspension looks like. If you ask the computer what is suspension, you need to teach the computer to recognize sus suspension and then we will tell you according to this characterization of suspension, it will show you some sus suspension. But you can, but you can, you as a user can do it yourself. So defining things in your own terms with one click. And this is something that we will be doing a lot. So we will use this generic AI as a starting point for you to start to search what you to start fishing. And once you, you have it, you put a tag, your personal tag. Then of course you can create these panoramic views of many things. And the, 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 the funny thing, for example, this is, this is the story of Facebook and the users, but in colors. So imagine that this is, this is, uh, these are user, Facebook users. And instead of objects that are being identified in the image is age, is where do you live, is uh, who are your friends, what kind of messages you're sending. And then the moment that I take another image or the moment that one user comes to Facebook, it immediately will know where it goes to. You can think about this as, as, as an image of, of, of such kind of, of models. This Panoramas of Cinema is an online application. Panoramasofcinema.ch slash search. And, uh, and what I also found very interesting, and this is not uh, specific to, the, to this application, but it kind of celebrates this technical moment where you can you can operate all this uh, the computing can be independent to how it is rendered to the phase that it has so in technical terms i call it back back end and front end so you have a you have a part that is doing stuff and by defining a simple protocol a simple simple protocol which just means rules to ask a questions and what is and, and, and the formats and the language in which it's going to come out. So anybody can ask something to, to the database, to the application, and then how it's rendered is totally decoupled from, from, from this computation on the back. So this kind of application, they can have many faces. And everybody can, in principle, build one face to the computing and to the database and to everything that is kind of running on the back. <clears throat> so what kind of what kind of abilities this instrument has? So it's image search, multi-scalar, so label to so by, by uh, searching by label, searching by tag, video search, search in a scene, again multi-scalar to different characters, text search the tax system that helps you to name things in your own terms, to identify things in your own terms, and to create these panoramic views that are going to be uh, uh, some kind of basis for to, to the basis of images uh, for your projects. And everything is kind of one click. Uh, I will give you a tutorial actually after after this talk, so I will skip this part and then we'll look at it in detail uh, 
one hour or so. So another kind of working working progress project. So this I didn't prepare. So I know I did this guy. So this is kind of a, a you started this year, kind of. Uh, it's called Marx, and it's a private search engine as well, tailored to private collections of of uh, of uh, of images thought for thought for for collection of images that are directly related to to a, to a, the production of, of architectural projects in traditional ways. So with the images of, of the panoramas, it's not really about showing uh, architecture as a building, but it has a lot to do with elements Uh, I can't hear you anymore, Professor. I'm back. So for this, in this early stage, so I just crawled all the 500 plus projects from OMA, one office, 500 plus architectural projects, 5,000 plus images, more than 10,000 sentences, just a small uh, 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 script crawler, but you get everything. You will see, you will see how this works more or less in, in a few minutes. So then you have a database. Then, in principle, it's private. Huh? And then you do similar stuff machine learning on images and text, start recognizing things, start recognizing objects, colors, and structures, and so on. And similarly, with a, with a similar structure, uh, you can have different faces for the same. From, for, for the same things. Uh, right, so then this, it, it, has a dif it has different abilities than, than, than the panoramas in the sense that you can ask, you can search for images, but not based on labels. You know, saying show me a helicopter, but based on text, you can search for full sentences, just like Google does in a way. You can search an image based on an image. You can show an image, and then the images from that database will appear. Text and a recommender search, a recommender engine, just like Netflix. I view like this, then instantly from the same database, the next show that is more or less similar to it will appear. And this, this, I can show you this, the stage of this. This is work in progress. We, we can ask for water over a bridge. And you get kind of images like this. Huh? So as I say, it's all OMA. If you want, uh, if you want to check the images that are similar to each other, okay, this Prada Prada fashion show, you just click on it, and the recommender just show you the images that are more or less similar to to it. Kind of, you have this stuff here. 
or this is a recommender, or you can just say, I have an image. I have this image. What do you have? What do I have to say? So you upload one image, all this stuff happens on the back, and then, uh, uh, then you get this kind of funny. Huh? Project, yeah? And then you click and then you go to the project. So the fantasies of these applications are not clear yet, but uh, what I find super interesting is that, that uh, the abilities are just kind of piling up. So the principles are the same. So this is the interesting thing, the, the techniques are exactly the same. And if you get abstract enough, I would say that it's just about the probabilities, same story. And then according to what is it that you want to find and how do you want to find it, then you start modeling things in a very specific way. This, we, we will not be uh, working with this. I'm, I'm not sure what's the future of this, but uh, what is there? Let's see what happens. So now, what, what, what do I do with, with panoramas of cinema? What would I do with all these clips, with all these movies, with all these images? I will show you two short projects. One is, this is called Bom Dia Tovarista Costa. And it's a video installation for the 12th International Architecture Biennale in Sao Paulo. This is a collaboration between, between uh, scallops and Foreign Bureau from Moscow. So this was for, for the Biennale Architecture in Sao Paulo, and then the topic was uh, Todo Di Every Day. So then the theme was to look at the architecture of the, ban of the banal and to try to learn from it. So there were hundreds of different contributions, a uh, very beautiful space in, in Sao Paulo, a uh, very nice experience. So Todo Dia, every day, and then we said, okay, uh, we, we, with, with Foreign Bureau, this architectural office based in Moscow, uh, we said, okay, what can we do? And this office recently finished the remodeling of a building in, in Gorky Park. And, uh, and through doing kind of research on the building, they kind of find out that the building has had many faces. So from the Tsar times till this office kind of remodeled it into the office for, for garage museum in the same park, but uh, building next to it. So in one of these faces that the building had was uh, the first new cinema in Moscow and was built by a project by an architect from 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 uh, from Sao Paulo and a Russian young architect. So uh, uh, Da Costa and I'll tell you the name of the other guy. So okay, this is this is fun. This looks like fun. This looks like an interesting link. What to do? Let's bring these two guys back to life. Let's bring them back to life and make them talk about the everyday, whatever that may mean. Huh? So then 200 movies from Brazil, from Russia, machine learning, a little bit of stories. And what, 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 what is with the, with the living rooms? What kind of actions, what kind of ritual, what kind of colors happen in the living rooms, in the bedrooms of Russia of a specific time? of, of, uh, of uh, Brazil in a specific time and start creating these panoramic views of, of what we thought is the everyday and, and start to identify what kind of spaces they were building, what kind of things they were doing. One very funny story. So this is why I have this slide. Huh? So one is, is, uh, is Rodrigo da Costa and the other one is Vainov. And these are bedrooms. And if you watch the movies or you just watch the clips, I didn't watch these 200 movies. I don't speak Russian, I speak Portuguese. I didn't watch them, but then just by, search, by searching for this stuff, it's super funny. In one, in the, with, the, with, the, with the Russian movies, they're all crying or hangover or fighting. 
and then with the Brazilians, they're always they're always uh, they're always naked, they're always dancing, they're always screaming, very like side 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 note. So this this kind of this kind of stories where we, we thought, okay, let's let's tell these kind of stories to go beyond the banal and trying to to bring the architectural qualities and architectural and even the certain cultural aspects that are accommodated by specific space. It's almost like coffee versus tea. It's like, yeah. Something like this. And then you do this like like uh, for four hours. And what happened was, uh, so it was the, the presentation of the book and and the audience, what was uh, the audience would witness vis-a-vis uh, 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 -vis between Tell me what's going on. Tell, tell what you have to. What do you have to say about the banality of of kitchens? Uh, professor, you're gone again. Uh, professor, you are gone again. Eu sei que vou te amar Por toda a minha vida eu vou te amar Сейчас Сашка из института придет. Акорда, Марио! Ты на дрой фора! Акорда, Марио! Ты на дрой фора! Ваша мама упала! Нормально, братан! Ну, правда, в чем прикол? Ничего! Ничего! Врагу не сдается наш гордый варяг! Ой! Чего уж я всегда фамилия? Не могу я ее каждый день проклятую есть! Me dá uma aspirina? O que te dói? Eu não sei, eu sei que dói. Seu mês. Seu colega Gonçalves contraiu. 
novamente matrimônio. Não, não precisa bater palmas agora. Eu estou apenas ensaiando. Vamos trabalhar? And one last project. This is a, a, video, to, a video to conjure vampires and witches uh, for Cthulhu folder. So it's called Among Us. And this was uh, a, a commissioned by a very cool gallery in Zurich. And uh, the theme of, of the season was vampires and witches. And, uh, and I think for here, talking to the, to the curator and trying to share fantasies about what, what the vampire and a witch may be about today and what they were about and what kind of roles they play in society. Uh, this 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 nice inter exchange vampire in which two lovers who never kissed two scapegoats of a change one to turn the wheel one to stop the turning both go to flames a fear embrace so i think we can think about this this these characters are our scapegoats as parts of the community that at a certain point needed to be sacrificed in order to regain certain order and stability. Uh, one that once is sacrificed, science kind of gets saved. No, we're talking about the witches, the witches and the forest and alchemy and so on. So at, at these times, we can say that they were challenging or they were a proto science that once that science got powerful, then you kill the witch. And then science emerges. Or on the other side, with the vampire, uh, this, this character who lives at the top of the mountain, overseeing all the hard work of the people and having a life that is totally the opposite from, from the workers of the land. So he only he, he's sleeping during the day and he is uh, uh, awake during the night while everyone is sleeping. Then he's just making his life, sucking the blood. Of, 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 of the works of the land. So once, once you, you kill him, another kind of, of society emerges. One moves in the day, one in the night, they meet in the ashes of their ignition for knowledge. So what, uh, what we thought would be interesting here is to say, okay, if, if then we characterize them as, as part an active part of a society as scapegoats then in principle every society has scapegoats and then the question would be how how, how would the would the vampire and which for today would look like so then the exercise here was to say how how can we start qualifying a vampire without showing the face because in principle they are if they are among us we know them but we don't know them but we know what they do. We know what they're interested in. We know where they move, what kind of boundaries they may be pushing and so on. So we say, okay, let's try to conjure them, to attract them just by mimicking and by doing something like they would do. So how to, how to again, with the, with the panoramas, with specific characters, to identify right, the rights, the movements, the details, the temperatures, the reactions that people have when someone may see a vampire of a witch. 
So uh, again, with with movies and uh, with a cool with a cool soundtrack uh, like Tom York movies that I, most of them I didn't watch, but uh, some of them I did. Nevertheless, this two minutes video was came out through the work of many uh, directors and myself a bit and night music and so on. So this is kind of the exercise. Uh, in, uh, uh, the understanding is this is what we are all doing. We should all, you should all do as well in 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 the context of the studio. So two minutes video, but uh... <laughs> Very, very low, huh? but maybe it's good because these people are here. Yeah. I am. Um... Ah, this is it. Yeah. I am connected, and then I say, I am connected. Little bit there. Yeah, I think we're good. Ah, here, speaker. I got this connected. Speaker is here. Ah, here. Something like that. 
I think maybe over the, the next days, we will show as well, I guess, bits and pieces of, of the work that uh, uh, students from ETH are doing as well. And it's pretty much in the same line as well with different tones and, and colors and so on. But uh, this, this is not, uh, this, at least this part of, the, of, the, of our course of the semester is not that experimental. So we have certain expectations and then we will work on it together. And we have certain references that are very close to articulate an architectural project. But I guess this can come up uh, with the student Meteora and, and the people who are doing there. Little by little, it will come constantly. What's important here with these kind of videos is that there is a voiceover. Huh? There is you talking about what's going on, and this is coming from another world, mm -hmm. so that we get these kind of John Wilson moments. Mm -hmm. So, this full temperament, for example, you can think about this as full temperament, just emotions, which it was kind of the point that become your like, like, like a witch or like just pure emotions, no rational, no, not sense, no nothing, you just and it volume is out and so on it's a different game but uh yeah 